Here's America's pastime. It's the Minnesota Twins against the Chicago White Sox. And now off to U.S. Cellular Field with our crew of Gary, John, and Steve, who are ready to call the game. The hot bat of Paul Konerko. We'll see if he can continue to dominate at the plate. It's American League Baseball from the American League Central. The Chicago White Sox on hand. 2K Sports proudly presents Major League Baseball. It's Wednesday night. Happy to have you with us. There's starter Eric Stoltz. Steve, focus here against Minnesota. Well, pretty even matchup right here. A lineup that does struggle, but a pitcher that struggles at times as well. And you know, the fact that he's a left-hander on the mound may give him a little bit of an advantage with the movement on his pitches. But I think he's going to need run support to have success to win a ball game. Ron Gardenhire are ready to go. Here's his lineup. So who are you looking at, John? Well, Denard Spann has all the tools in the world to be a force at the top of the batting order. A good average hitter, a high on base guy, not going to hit a lot of home runs, but to me, he's the consummate leadoff hitter. He knows his limitations, but he knows his strengths, and he uses his strengths more than anyone. Leading off the game, Denard Spann. He'd really like to break out going to two for his last 14. He just hasn't been able to get it going these last three games. Hit up the middle. Stoltz. That's one away. And now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. Uh, John, anyone in particular that uh, we want to keep an eye on? Well, the ability to cover ground is a key for any outfielder. And Alex Rios can get on a horse and chase down those gappers. His team is confident with him out there. He's a solid all-around defender. And he possesses a pretty good throwing arm. So that makes him a, a double threat when it comes to playing the outfield. This one swung on and driven hard. Diazza to field this one. And he grabs it in his tracks. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. They wrap up the series with Minnesota tomorrow. They'll kick off a series with division rivals, the Cleveland Indians. That should be a great series. They really match up well. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. After that, it's out on the road to take on the Rays. Here's Joe Maurer now at two down. Fastball in there for a called strike. Last time out, a loss for the White Sox. They had quite a bit of steam coming into that one. They'd won four in a row. Oh. And he leaves that one alone. Joe Maurer, patience. That'll even the count. That last one, a bit of a blowout. Their pitching staff really struggled. Yeah, losing by seven runs, it puts a lot of pressure on your offense and too much in this game. Swinging and a miss, and it's now one and two. This has been an excellent stretch for him as he's gone 10 for his last 24. Now, if you want to score runs, you need men on base, and that's exactly what he's been You're doing. Out. High rate of success getting himself on base. End of this inning with a nice piece of pitching work as he gets the K. No scoring here, ending this half inning. And the White Sox, their first chance is coming. It's going to be Scott Diamond on the mound. He'll be Minnesota's starter. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox line, there's a swing, and that one's hit on the ground. One away now. Right now, we've got a moment. Let's take a look at the lineup for the White Sox. Thoughts, John? Anybody stand up? Well, some guys are just pure excitement on the baseball field, and that's what Alexi Ramirez is. Not a big guy, kind of a wiry, strong fella, but he can hit the ball out of the ballpark, and he can also hit for a high average. But to tell you how bad that twin season was last year, they went from 90 wins in 2010 to 90 losses in 2011. And when you look at why, a big part of it, injuries. To back up what Steve was saying about twins injuries last year when it all was said and done of the nine position players they had on. Oh, what a drive. He smashed it. This one's going to be fielded by Span as he just strolls over for that out. Now we'll take a quick look at the twins and how they'll be out there positionally on defense. And uh, scouting those fielders, John. Well, Joe Maurer is a guy you have to keep an eye on in this one. I mean, not only is he a great catcher of the ball, 
He also is great at handling his pitching staff. Not a lot he can't do behind the plate. And for a tall guy to be as athletic as he is, that's a tough thing to do for a catcher. And Adam Dunn to bat. Ball one. Curveball just misses one and all. Well, he struck out in every at bat last night, so he's looking to make a little bit of contact in the game today. That would be progress. Ball two. Fastball misses badly. He's behind two and all. Trying to get the ground ball out, you throw that two-seam fastball away from the hitter, trying to get him to reach and roll right over it. He laid off of it here. The 2-1. Oh, that one in the dirt. Good play by the catcher. Kept it in front of him. Lined up the middle. Number 20. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this happening. No runs, no hits, no one left on. And so Josh Willingham leading it off. Right and he offers at the circle change and misses 0-1. Looking at the numbers, last year he hit 200 against the White Sox at U.S. Cellular Field. No success in this ballpark last year, but you know what? It's a new year, and he has new opportunities. And Josh Willingham not looking for that pitch. Strikes out. That's a great strikeout right there, Gary. Three pitches, and he sits him down. How about that for efficiency? And Domit's in the box. Well, this matchup with the Twins is not one that's been favorable to the White Sox. You have to go back to 2001. There's only been one year in 2005 where the White Sox have edged out the Twins in the series. First pitch was a strike. 0-1 now. 2011 in the series for the Sox and Twins. Same old story. Twins won the first six games in a row against the Sox. And, and listen, that's such a big difference right there. You get off to that good lead. You have confidence in the matchup. It ended up allowing the Twins to prevail again. He delivers. Good looking fastball. Call the ball though, two and one. The trouble right now is just getting on base for him. Just 12 hits in his last 48. You know it's been a battle for him to hit well since the first part of May. Just hasn't been getting it done. Two and and two. Delmet with a swing and a miss for his strike, and that's going to even up the count. I uh, gotta be feeling good today. Picked up a couple hits in the game last night. Swing and a high chopper towards the hole. And Ramirez feels the ball. Two away. Now the teams that have been finding their way on base. Our State Farm leaderboard on base percentage for the last ten. Tigers number one. The Twins in second. Third, the Rays. Fourth, the White Sox. And number five, the Indians round it out. Well, I tell you, when you watch these two teams play over the last 10 days, there seems to be a fight at the bat rack. Everyone wants to get up because they know they're going to get on base. These two teams have been on base so much in the last 10 days that it just makes it look like there's a crowd on the base pass. The pitchers better beat the top of their game, and they better be throwing strikes because they will take a walk. And if they do, they're probably going to come around to score. Here's the 1-1. 1-1, one, one, a fastball inside, 2-1 and one now. Well, a good pitch right there. He tried to get one in on his hands, but he just missed, though, in off the plate. Great pitch. Line towards third and foul. The 2-2 pitch. That swung on and flied to right. That one's grabbed. Side retired. And they go quietly offensively in this half inning. Nothing across. And Paul Caderco to lead it off. One of the best batting averages in the league. And it's fouled away. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary. Really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. And Paul Canerco watching that one go by to even the count up. His stroke has been sweet for such a long stretch right now. I mean, he's picked up 18 hits in his last 42 at bat. There's a ground ball. Number 20. That's one down. These are the hot bats right now. The highest batting average over the last 10 days. Courtesy of State Farm. 
Well, both of these players over the last 10 games have been some of the hottest hitters in all of baseball. I don't know what you can do to get them out. You just hope and you know that eventually they're going to slow down. For the pitcher's sake, you hope it starts in this one. It's going to be Pruszynski. Well, it was the end of an era for the White Sox in 2011. The last season for nine-year reign of skipper Ozzie Guillen, one of the most beloved Ball. players in Sox history, and probably goes down as one of the most beloved managers as well. Line drive fouled off towards first. A swing and a hit to Span. They take care of that one. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. Third in triples, sixth in stolen bases, and they're ranked in the top ten in home runs. So power, a big part of their offense and how they score runs. And Alex Rios up. A 266 hitter last year against the Twins. Carroll. Throws to first in time. That's three down. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. Close in the batter's box. He'll get things going here in the third. The pitch. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. Well, just because he's a fastball hitter doesn't mean you can't throw him a fastball. Strength on strength right there. And the pitcher came out ahead. 0-1 oh, is a circle change that's over for a called strike. He likes to try to make contact 0-2 and not get struck out, so that means you can't throw anything too close to the plate right here. You're strike three called on the fastball. What a way. Just drops that one in there. and Good break on it. 83 miles per hour. And, well, you don't want to get caught looking at a fastball like that. They set him up beautifully with the change of speed, but you still think he'd be able to at least try and take a hack. And Casillas batting. And I know the hitting coach has been working with him right now. Only six hits in his last 29 at-bats. Been a tough month of May for him. Just not able to get things going right there. And, you know, hoping that summertime will bring some base hits. Foul ball! Fouled off. Ball. Tried to get him to go after that curve. One and two. Well, he had a contribution last night offensively as he drove in a couple of runs. And Alexei Casilla right through that pitch, strike three. Well, he climbs the ladder on him, Gary, and he just didn't have enough bat speed to catch up to that pitch. Carroll at the plate. Last year, he put up a big number, 462 against the White Sox here in Chicago. First pitch he let go by, and it uh, was a ball, 1-0. Oh. Well, that's just some good old country hardball right there. Forcing fastball up in the zone. Strike one. Called strike on the outside corner at its 1-1. One one. One, one on the way. Strike Call two. fastball, now the count 1-2. and two. Now Przinski positions himself. Fastball swung on and missed. Side retired. Nothing doing here in this half inning. The shutout continues in Chicago. And for those of you just joining in, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Cruck and Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And we're going to see Lillibridge here. He'll start things off for the home team. We're in the third. As he drops back and puts it away. But they had the outfield swung around to right that time, so they had a long way to go to run that ball down. Coming to the plate now, here's Morrill. Swing and a high drive to straightaway left field for the wall. And Willingham with a glove. What a play. Well, as a hitter, you see the outfielder swung around to right field, and you have to think to yourself, if I can only hit it to left. He got it there, but it didn't quite fall in. And Beckham's in the box. The trouble right now is just getting on base for him. Just 12 hits in his last 59. And May has been a tough month for him so far. Just can't seem to get things right. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. It's Denard Spann to lead off. And here's a quick summary of how this guy's uh, mixing up his pitches. 
How's he doing? Well, look at his pitch count. I mean, he's thrown too many two-seam fastballs. Well, he's not fooling anybody out there today. He needs some deception to his game, and that circle change is what he gets. It looks like a fastball coming out of his hand, but changes speeds and moves out of the zone. 1-0 pitch is a fastball high, 2-0. Look, they haven't scored or gotten a hit, and we're in the fourth inning right now. They've got to really reconsider their approach at the plate as we move through the lineup the second time around. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. One down. And Memorial Day is coming right up. It's going to be the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. They'll be hosting the Milwaukee Brewers. Start time is 8 Eastern. A chance to watch two good teams matching up in that one, Gary. I'm really looking forward to it. Their shortstop in the box. Flew out last time. Here's the first pitch. And he checks his swing there, but it's in there for a strike on one. And here's the pitch. 0-1, fastball and a called strike. Now's the time he goes to the slider. This guy struggles in this situation. It's a good pitch for him. This one's grounded to second. Beckham's got that one. And a good throw gets him two down. But Gary, he just continues to mow this lineup down. We're talking about 11 hitters in a row retired. Here's Joe Maurer now at two down. For his career, 321 off the White Sox. Strike started off the at-bat 0-1. Mauer fouls it away. You're out. Oh, Joe Mauer not looking for that one. Strike three. You could not ask for a better four inning so far. Everything's working. A dozen up and a dozen down. You can't start any better than this. Still scoreless in Chicago. It'll be the leadoff man trying to get things going here. And Diazza settles it. That one swung on, hit in the air. One away. Now the State Farm leaderboard shows us some lineups that have really gotten into the swing of things during the past 10 games. Number one, the Red Sox. Second, the Blue Jays. White Sox third. Fourth, the Orioles. And we've got the Rangers. They are fifth. With this sort of power, these teams have the ability to score runs in ways different than other teams because... They're in scoring position when they stand at home plate because of that ability to hit out of the ballpark. And so Ramirez retired. That's two gone. But Gary, he just continues to mow this lineup down. We're talking about 11 hitters in a row retired. And Adam Dunn to bat. Holds back on that curveball. Takes a strike on one. Boy, I tell you what, this is some kind of curveball. I mean, it just locks the players up. He's got great stuff. Fastball swung on and missed, and the side's retired. Perfect through four, and he is dealing. Well, he's done everything you want out of us. And so Josh Willingham leading it off. These at-bats, how's he starting them? Let's take a look. Well, what does an 0-1 count do for you? Well, in this game, it does a lot. He's gotten seven hitters out in this game when he's gone 0-1 in the count. So first pitch strikes me a lot. Pitch on the way. Strike That's two. a strike. Willingham's going to have to take a big defensive stance. You know, I know we're not supposed to say anything about no hitters, so I would never <laughs> say anything about that, Gary. But Don't worry. You know, I don't think they have any hits here. We're, you know, moving through the middle part of the ballgame. That is a called strike three, and Josh Willingham's at bat is done. But Gary, he's not messing around, going right at him on the 0-2 count. He didn't waste anything. He just went right for the juggler. And it's Ryan Doman in the box now. Lifetime, one for three off Stoltz. This had bad underway, 1-0 after that first pitch missed. Well, he's one of those pitchers that doesn't like to fall behind, and when he does, he wants to come right back in with that fastball, so you got to be ready for it. Throw, got him. That is one heck of a play. You knew we were going to say hot corner on this place. <laughs> There's no question about it. You've got to be scared sometimes down there with the way the ball gets on you. Great reactions and then the accurate throw from his knees. And Parmalee's batting. 0 for 1 thus far. Ball. 
Just missed with the fastball. One and zero. Now a moment here to look at the quality strikes this pitcher has been throwing here today. Boy, he has thrown a ton of them. Quality pitches, quality strikes. That's the kind of performance we're seeing. Just a very solid approach against this lineup. Keeping the ball down in the strike zone, and the numbers show he's doing it well. Well, that's what you have to do to be successful. Keep the ball down in the zone, pitch after pitch. Try to get the hitters to hit the top of the ball. Good pitch on the outside corner, one and two. One two pitch coming. You're out. Struck him out. That's number eight in the game. Well, that's five in the books now, and he's faced the minimum number of hitters. You know, more than halfway through this game, and nobody doing anything at all against him. They can't figure. And Paul Kaderko to lead it off. He's got one of the best averages in the American League. And that's a hit span to field. The catch, and he puts it away. Out number one. Well, it's now a Baker's dozen. 13 in a row he set down. Absolutely lights out. What a performance. It's going to be Przinski. Parmalee. He's and he steps on first. That's the second out. Still, no one has been able to reach base, and we're in the fifth. You know, I love watching him. This next time through the lineup, the adjustments he's making, the hitters just can't figure him out. And Alex Rios up. He's been off of his game right now. Just eight hits in his last 40 at-bats. It has been a tough time for him at the plate. His struggles date back to mid-May. Just not producing like he can. That's in the dirt. He traps it. Now the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. And Willingham's there. And that's going to do it in this half inning. Well, you don't want to say anything to... And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Cruck, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Close in the batter's box. He's ready to start out here in the sixth inning. Oh, one the count now as we're in the sixth. Look here as we move through the middle part of this ball game right now. They just cannot mount any offense at all. No hits. And I tell you what, this pitcher is just shutting them down. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And he'll step on first for out number one. Boy, it doesn't take long to count the amount of hitters he's been able to get out so far. He's just marching along here with lots of zeros. Well, the key right now, he's got to maintain his focus. Winning the game is the primary goal right now. And Casillas batting. He is 0 for 8 lifetime against Stoltz. Casillas stays off that. It's up high. Well, that pitch right there just seemed to get away from the pitcher. Took off on him. Looked like he tried to overthrow that a little bit. Here's the pitch. He takes a fastball for a strike. Now it's one and two. We have seen a great pitching performance on the mound and a tremendous use of that strike zone that's been on display here. Pretty impressive stuff, the way he's been pounding this strike zone. It's an indication of the performance we're seeing from him. You don't have success without good use of mixing locations. You know, John, I, I agree. I think that he's kept hitters off balance. Every once in a while, I don't like the pitch selection, but he's executed that pitch even when it was the wrong one. Able to set him down there. Chalk that one up as a strikeout for him. Well, I'll tell you something, Steve. He keeps pitching like this. The murmurs are going to start. Well, you can hear the chatter in the stands right now. People starting to recognize a lot of zeros up on that scoreboard. Carroll at the plate. He was a strikeout victim last time through the lineup. Ball. Low for ball one. Last year, he, he acquired 13 ABs and got six hits off the White Sox. Here's the 1-0. Fastball just misses and he falls behind 2 0. Now the 2 0. And he takes a called strike 2 and 1. Swing, hot shot. Beckham's got that one. Out. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. Let's go. And we're going to 
see Lillibridge here. He'll lead off the bottom half of the sixth. Here's the first pick. There's a swing. A ball hit high and deep. Straight away left field. Goodbye. Home run. White Sox. That puts him on the board. And they get the first run of the ball game. That solo shot. That is a big fly ball. one nothing. Uh, Gary, White Sox couldn't be happier right now. They've gotten the hits they needed. They've taken the lead. They're looking to add on more, hoping to end up winning this game. Swing and a hot shot. That one gets through for a base hit. Well, most hitters love that ball elevated so they can try to hit it out of the ballpark. But this is not one of these hitters. He loves the ball down in the strike zone. That's why he got that big knock right there. And Beckham's in the box. How's he attacking on the first delivery? Let's look here. Well, this is what he wanted to do right here. He's retired 10 batters in this game, and he's done it when he's gone 0-1 in the oh. count. I mean, it's efficient, and it's productive. The pitch. Swing and a line drive. And he's got it. Over to second for one. Back to first. Not in time. Not quick enough on the relay. Well, they get the lead runner at second, but they just couldn't turn two. I know they wanted to. And so with one down, we'll see Alejandro Diaz. A solid 357 lifetime off the Twins. And it's just amazing how he can have this team's number year in and year out. That's one out. Decides not to try for the double play. Hangs on to it. Now State Farm brings you the league leaders in stolen bases. You can never underestimate the value of speed on the game. It's not only taking the extra base, but it's also the pressure it puts on the defense to force them to quickly make a play. And a runner on for Alexei Ramirez. Steve, let's take a look at... Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with the single. Fantastic chance here. The Twins' schedule. Let's have a look. One game left to the White Sox. That's tomorrow. Then they take their battle back to the American League Central. The Detroit Tigers. That's a three-game series. Their homestand continues with another team, the Oakland Athletics. So quite a few home games. They'll be looking to capitalize. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Now Dunn will have to be very protective. Well, that's what you like to see. Power. Hit on the ground. And Diaz comes in. Well, that pitch down and away is the toughest in the game to hit. It's a perfect pitch from the pitcher. Great piece of hitting. And keep that in mind. Next time around, we'll see whether or not he changes up and how he throws to this guy. So Paul Konerko with a chance two on and a couple oh. away. Just one player picking up after another, Steve. This is this is a good offensive show going on, and they're climbing the ladder with it. He swings down and really hit that. And that ends the half inning as Spam makes the play. And so two runs finally plate. They are in a strong position now because that might be enough. The light. It's Denard Span to lead off. 0 for 2 thus far. He deals. Ground ball. Beckham's got that one. You're out. One away. Well, I still have plenty of chances to try to get to him, but right now it doesn't look like anybody's been able to try to even do anything against him so far. Number two spot in the lineup up again. Grounded out last time. Strike Starts him out with a called strike on the circle change. I don't know about you, Gary, but uh, when I look up the board under that H column, the hits column, I see a big goose egg there. So clearly, we're Hold getting on. into exciting territory right now. Two and one, one one pitch, fastball, high, two and one. Two one pitch. This one's grounded near third. Foul. Foul ball! And he fouls off another one. Well, you talk about a battle. This guy's really working up at the plate right here. Fouled off a great pitch right there on that 2-2 pitch to stay alive. Foul ball! And that's another foul ball.
That swung on and grounded up the middle. Throw to first gets him in there at two down. But well, clearly pitching an extraordinary game so far here today. Two outs in the seventh. How far can he keep it going? Here's Joe Maurer now at two down. Not looking last time. Oh. Fastball misses away. One and oh. Now the 1 0 pitch. One he watches one. that fastball. It'll even up the count at 1 0 1. But Gary, the numbers seem to indicate he likes to go fastball on a 1 1 count, trying to get back ahead again. Here's a swing and a ground ball. Beckham. You're and he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. Now, as we get deeper into the game, he's got to be thinking to himself a perfect game is within reach right now. He needs to keep. Leading it off, A.J. Przinsky. You know, let's take a look at a breakdown of how this guy has been mixing up his pitches so far in this one. What stands out, guys? Well, the thing that stands out to me is the fact that he's thrown strikes and he's commanded the strike zone, and he's not been predictable. If a pitcher becomes predictable, he becomes easy to hit. And he needs to stay focused right here and not get off track. He knows what his plan is. Change speeds, change locations, change pitches, move the ball around. Back up the middle. But he stays with it, gets the out. That's how you do it. Oh, Gary, that's a nice play right there on the mound. Able to grab it and then toss it over easily to first base for the out. One out. And Alex Rios at the plate. He flew out his last time up. Oh. Off the plate with a fastball, and it's 1-0. One of oh. his great of first years Alex Rios had in his first season with the White Sox. That's how bad his numbers were. Hit up the middle, and that's going to be a base hit for Rios. Alex Rios has really got the rebound. He, he had the numbers go down and actually lost his job. He's got to find a way back. Well, 2011 is going to be a year that he wants to forget. He came on a little bit at the end, but he needs to put it all back together again because he has the ability to hit for power and has speed. Well, that sort of first step quickness, Rios is a real threat oh, to run. They've got to keep an eye on him. Mauer is setting up. Foul. Taps this one foul off to the left. You're Swing and a miss. Strike him out with a breaking ball. Two down. I tell you, that kind of that kind of breaking ball in the low 80s is awfully tough to hit. He was picking on him on the inside part of the plate. Well, he made the pitcher's job so much easier by taking that swing. Better recognition what the pitcher's trying to do. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And Willingham's there. And that's going to do it in this half inning. No runs at a base hit. They leave one man on. And so Josh Willingham leading it off. He has struck out twice against Stoltz. Well, he did see the ball very well in his last at bat. Striking out looking on that circle changeup. And must have been looking for something hard. Got something soft. And watched it go by. Yeah, and right now you can tell he's having trouble seeing that pitch. So if I'm on the hill, I go to it as soon as I get two strikes on him. And he looks at a slider that's in there, one and one. No runs, no hits. Deep, deep into this ball game, Gary. And obviously he is pitching a gem of a game. That's taken low for a ball, two and one. The two one pitch. And three balls, one strike. Willingham, so he's got room to work here. The best curveballs are the ones that start in the strike zone, then fall out of the strike zone. He couldn't get him to fish for that one, though. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. And Diazza picks it up. I love the way he's gaining confidence with every batter. He knows exactly what he wants to do. Third time through the lineup now. He's changing his approach going after these hitters. And it's Ryan Domit in the box now. Grounded out his last time through. First pitch, curveball, swung out of missed, 0 and 1. Well, that's a great location down in the strikes and with that curveball. And like the right there, he got a swing and miss. But even if they make contact, you're going to get a grounder somewhere to your infield. Oh. Got 
Got him. Two down. Eighth inning. Now he is just four outs away from a piece of baseball immortality. Well, look at him walking back to the dugout, shaking his head. He has baffled this lineup the entire game right now. They just can't seem to find a hole and put the ball in play. And Parmalee's batting. Now, so much has been working for this man on the mound today. Effective using the pitches that are outside the strike zone. Mm, mm, mm. He has been fooling hitters. Well, he's been very effective today, and you look at the performance, he's generating strikes with pitches out of the zone, getting the hitters to chase. Oh, absolutely, Steven. You, know, you want to try to expand the strike zone. You start in the strike zone early, and then try to make him chase. That's what he's had these hitters doing all game. Oh, tough one to lay off right there, that fastball, one and two. Well, he's he's over the 80 pitch mark right now at this point in the game. And you know that pitching coach is keeping a close eye on him to see if he tires. And that swung on and hit. Diaz is going to play it. That's caught. Side is retired. Well, he's about to come out in the most intense situation he's probably ever been in before. You're going out to the ninth inning. You got a chance to get that perfect game. I'll tell you what, a lot of pressure on him. The shutout. It's Gordon Beckham to lead it off. How's he using the strike zone to his advantage? Here's a quick look at how he's been mixed. That swung on, hit on the ground. And that's out number one, stepping in the bag. And as May winds down, let's see how the standings are in the Central Division, courtesy of State Farm. First place, the Indians. It's the White Sox in second. The Tigers third place. In fourth place, it's the Royals. And the Twins round it out. Last spot. Now well, for the Twins, they need to get things going here quickly and move up if they can. Another repeat year at the bottom of the division oh. and a major disappointment for this franchise. Deaza at the plate. Hitless so far, he'll get another shot at it now. A smash towards the hole. Well, you're going to have to keep a close eye on this guy at first base. Pay a lot of attention to him because you know he more than likely has the green light. He can go at any time. So Alexei Ramirez is batting. Ramirez will foul that one away. Oh. Here's the pitch. Oh my, is he wild right now? That could be trouble. So they can't make the play. But Gary's to make the error right there. You just don't want to do that. It's just not good baseball. You're out. A swing and a miss. Alexei Ramirez is retired. 81 miles per hour with some solid movement. Well, sometimes you get fooled so badly, there's just nothing else you can do but hope and pray that you put the ball in play, hopefully foul, to get another pitch to hit. A big right. moment here for Adam Dunn. He's got to try to make contact in this big showdown. But Gary, he struggles with runners on base, so look for them to go right at him at the plate. Now. And Adam Dunn looks at that one for a ball. Count is even. This one's bounced up the middle. Picks it up. He's a Throws to first side is retired. So they pick up a hit, but leave a man at second and fail to score. Loose in the batter's box. He's going to start the ninth inning. Here's the first pitch. That's a foul ball. ball one. That misses downstairs for a ball. One and one. Uh, Gary in the ninth inning has not given up a hit in this one, so we may be looking at some history for him personally and for his club. Strike two, Strike two with a swing and a miss on a fastball. Well, it's tough to tell a hitter to stay back on a fastball, but this is what he needs to do. He's jumping out, trying to get to it, and it's just way out in front. And that swung on and hit. Diaz is going to play it. And it's caught by Ramirez. One away. One out here in the ninth inning, and perfection is within reach. He is so close to it. He can taste it right now, but you know the players behind him feeling the pressure. They need to make the play to get the perfect game. Strike one. And Casillas batting. Struck out swinging last time. And the uh, first pitch was a strike. Got him at 0-1 right now. So far, he's come up empty, striking out twice against Stoltz. Well, he just gassed him the last time with that high heater. 
Now you got to blew that four seamer right by him, so you got to think he's going to go back for the strikeout again. When you look at how this lineup is done against that pitch, and you'll see that he isn't alone with that K. That pitch has been golden so far. Struck him out. We are that close. He is one out away from perfection. And Gary, you can feel the energy in this crowd. It just doesn't matter who you're cheering for. Everybody knows they're witnessing baseball history being made. Carroll at the plate. Ground out victim last time through. First pitch on the way. Fastball swung on a miss. Still in one. Well, the two-seamer has his timing way off. He swung and missed. Swung way too early. Called strike below the waist, and he's in the hole now, 0-2. Look for him to try to fool the hitter. Pull the string a little bit here. He likes going to the changeup, 0-2. Swing and a rocket toward short. He's out, and there it is. He did it, a perfect game. One of the hardest feats to accomplish in baseball or in sports in general. An unbelievable effort, perfect stuff on a perfect day. Well, they win a great one here today, Gary, and it's all because of the pitching. Outstanding pitching really leading them to victory. As we check out the highlight reel of our player of the game. Well, you know, they don't call it a perfect game for nothing. This is something that this young man will remember for the rest of his life. And everyone who's here has to have a feeling that they just witnessed some sort of history. And I know never playing in one in my career, a perfect game, I'm thankful I got to see this one. And we witnessed a pitcher who has put himself in the record book. An incredible, perfect game. I mean, you see history made here with this kind of performance from this guy. An outstanding effort. And they get the win as a team as well to move forward. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed 2K Sports Major League Baseball. We wrap it up. I'm Gary Thorne with John Crux, Steve Phillips, and our 2K Sports group. We'll see you soon.